So in last video, I showed you how the algorithm for train compression works. If you have not watched that video, I will put the link of that video in the video description so you can watch that. After publishing that video, I got a lot of comments. Some people made very good suggestions, also there were many questions. So I think there were many questions around the performance of this compression algorithm compared to other existing compression algorithm. In this video, first I'm going to compare this compression algorithm to other one, and then I will show you the new changes in mTrain plugin. So here I stored this test train inside different height map format. I stored that in almost every known accepted format for height map. OpenXR, TIFF, Tragen, HFZ and more. Out of all of those formats, PNG 16-bit has the best compression compared to other one. Now here I am going to store this test train inside a PNG 16-bit and then I'm going to compare that to the new algorithm which I made. But consider one important thing before going any further. My compression algorithm just came out and definitely it will improve over time. So expect more improvement in future. Okay, let's first store our height map to a PNG 16 bit and see what it does. PNG can store this height map with size of 924 kilobytes. Now I am going to store the same height map with my compression algorithm. But in my compression algorithm, you have one flexibility, which is called accuracy. You can define accuracy to be a different number. And a smaller accuracy will result to bigger file size. Here I define my accuracy to be 5 cm. Considering that our train pixels are 1 meter away from each other, 5 cm will give us a very good result. So storing the same height map with this accuracy gives me a train size with 546 kB. Now what if I increase my accuracy? This time I put my accuracy to 10 cm. With that I get the train size with 396 kilobyte and now if I increase my accuracy to 0.2 meter I got this train you can see my train now contain a little bit noise if you look at that closely but usually player will not notice that and with that I got 280 kilobyte train size I can go even further than that I put my accuracy to 0.3 meter this image belong to this accuracy even with this accuracy, I get a good result. Just train become a little bit noisy, but the shape of the train is the same as before. With this accuracy, I got the train size with 227 kilobyte. You can go even further, but I don't recommend that. But as I test this on different train, for some train, even 0.3 meter of the accuracy will work. Now I want that you consider something really important. I really recommend during develop time to work with a small accuracy like 5 cm. And after finalizing your train by taking a backup from your train, see what the biggest accuracy work for you. Because if you change your accuracy to some big number, there is no going back. Your information will be lost even if you change it back to a small accuracy. And by the way, this compression algorithm is still in alpha stage. In future, I will add more improvement to this, but using that for now is safe and there is a way to export this data for future version, which I will tell you later in this video. Now let's see how we can use this new compression system on mTrain plugin. Download the latest release of mTrain plugin on GitHub and activate the plugin. First, I will show you how you can import a height map into mTrain plugin. Go to project tools click on import export height map as you click on that a new window will appear in this window you can import or export your height map here first choose the file path of your height map i have a raw 16 height map which i choose that next you should set a region size in pixel so what is the region size basically m train divide train to different sections so it can manage everything better Due to some reasons, each region pixel size should be in power of 2 plus 1. I explained that in another video which I put the link of that in video description. But basically that one extra pixel is the common pixel between train regions so there will be no gap between them. So this is one of the difference between this version of mTrain plugin and older version. In this version, we don't store one common pixel for edges. We will create them at load time instead. So here you just put the train resolution in power of 2. 
and one common edge pixel will be created at load time. Activate ease height map and set a minimum and maximum height. Then set your accuracy and your train data folder. Then click on import. This will import your train. Now, if you look at your train data directory, you can see we have some train resources. If I click on one of them, you can see inside that there is one byte array, which is called height map. You can add other stuff into this resource. For example, you can also add another byte array related to a splat map. Another important thing about this resource is that this resource contains compressed byte array. At load time, this will be loaded, uncompressed, and then unloaded. So during runtime, we deal only with uncompressed data. Now, if you have a really big train generated, for example, with Word Machine, you cannot import that with one single file. In that case, you need to import that in tiled version, or in another word, in multiple files. So same as before, open the import tab. If I select one of my tiled height map, you can see it automatically detect that this is a tiled height map and it bring me some options. Here there is an option which you can flip whether X or Y axis. So what does it mean? In the word machine, each tile position is like this, but in our coordinate system, each region is like this. The rest is the same and you can import your height map like before. Now let's see what other option we have for height map compression and how we can change that even after importing our train. For that, click on your train and click on info button. Here you can see the current setting for storing your height map. If you uncheck compress QTQ, this will not compress at all your height map and it will store your height map in a raw format. Here also you can change your accuracy. Another thing that you can apply here is one other compression algorithm on top of our compression algorithm. I did not write these compression algorithms and internally I don't know how they work, but they are supported by Godot and I add them here. Applying these sometimes can increase compression, but not a lot. I personally avoid using them as I think they can increase load time and they cannot compress a lot, but they are here so you can test them. The bottom section is related to other data that you can send to the train shader like a splat map which we'll talk about them right now. So you can import a splat map with the same import panel or you can also create an empty splat map without importing that. To create an empty splat map, go to project, tools, create and remove. Here I specify a name for my data. I call that a splat map. After that, I should specify in what image format I want to create my splat map. Here I choose the RGB format. After that, I can apply some image compression algorithm on top of my image. For now, I added two image compression algorithm. One of the compression algorithm here is QOI. This is a quite new compression, which is really fast. QOI is almost five times faster than PNG. So if you care about this, use QOI. Also, QOI only support these formats and PNG only support these formats. Here you can also apply other compression algorithm like before. But I don't recommend applying both compression at once. I already explained how you can create a splat map in mtrain plugin. So I suggest you to watch my other video about that. I put the link of that video in the video description. So there is a high chance that in future version of mtrain plugin, the compression format will change and it will become incompatible with this version. But I already thought about this and I applied a versioning system inside this. So this will give you error and this will not let you to use that with the newer version. The way you can use the future version of mtrain plugin in case the resource type will change is to export with old version to a raw format and then re-import that in the newer version. So the way you can export that is this. Go to project, tools, import, export. This time choose the export tab. Here you can choose to export an individual data or all of them. If you choose an individual data, you will have more format option. Here for export format, I choose Godot Trace and I choose a directory pass for export. And then I click export. If you export with Godot Res, you can re-import back with Godot Res import tab. Also with Godot Res import tab, you can import mtrain data if you created a train with mtrain older than this version. Okay, and this is another version of mtrain plugin. Hope to see you soon and have a good time. Bye.